Hey lovelies, I'm back and I'm here to go over the Dallas Housewives, the Real Housewives of Dallas, the part uh, two reunion for this current season, season five. So I'm back. Here we are. This might be a longer, I have like a couple pages longer of notes than usual. So this might be a smidge bit longer, just a little. So, um, for one, let me tell you that I'm going to list all the products down below. So if you want to know what I've used on my face, you'll know down here. Um, subscribe to me if you want to know when my videos are coming out because I've been doing them pretty frequently lately. I'm really liking this. Okay, well, let's get into it. So... The reunion starts off with um, them, Tiffany and Cameron, because that's who we left off with last week. So that's who we're going to begin back with, because remember they were getting into it about, uh, like the last thing that they were talking about was the whole, how Cameron reacted to like the food, the cuisine that uh, Tiffany was serving. And um, so, Cam had, the last thing that we basically heard about was the tweet that Cameron sent out about that she would rather eat sparkle dog treats than um, chicken feet. So the tweet gets pulled up and shown. And it's a picture of Cameron and she's basically promoting her uh, dog treats. The sparkle dog food brand that she's come up with but anyways so yeah she was saying like that you know they're she would rather have dog treats than to have the chicken feet um which tiffany felt offended by because she didn't like that cameron was i guess trying to profit off of it. It was something like that. It was like she felt offended. Well, because that's her culture and then also like the profiting off of the whole chicken feet thing or whatever. But uh, my nose is so itchy, guys. Seasonal allergies are not a joke. I'm so over seasonal allergies. I've never been so itchy in my nose and my eyes. Ugh. I did not have to struggle with seasonal allergies growing up and I am just over them now. So I have them now as an adult. So if you are struggling with seasonal allergies too and you feel miserable, just know you're not alone. I'm right there with you. Okay, so anyways. So yeah, uh, Tiffany felt offended by the whole tweet that Cameron put out there with the about the chicken feet. Okay. Um, and then Cameron... It basically, Tiffany says like this, she thinks that Cameron is privileged and ignorant, which I want to know, do you think that, do you think that Cameron is privileged and ignorant or she just a picky eater? Let me know what you think. Um, and I, I don't know, part of me also is wondering, do you guys feel like Cam really or Tiffany really gave Cameron a chance? Or do you feel like she like came in with a preconceived like, like she already had a, figured out who Cameron was. Maybe she watched the previous seasons. Um, uh, maybe just what she's heard about Cameron. Maybe they are in somewhat of the same circles and she kind of knows her, I don't know. But it just seemed like there was just something between the two of them more with Tiffany towards Cameron than Cameron towards Tiffany, in my opinion. Um, but anyhow, so, uh, then Cameron pulls out a printed, a printed post or whatever of Tiffany also making these, well, she's making t-shirts. Cameron did not make t-shirts. If I said that earlier, just a little bit ago, I did, I misspoke. Because Cameron did not have t-shirts. She just made a post. And she um, used that part of the show, the chicken feet part of the show, to um, 
promote her dog food brand. So, but Tiffany, I guess that she had made like t-shirts and um, it said on that like tastes like chicken, the chicken, it's her eating chicken feet or something. It says that tastes like chicken. I don't know, but basically these two are just going at it with each other over this whole chicken feet and food situation and all that. So that is how we start the episode off. And um, then Tiffany said something about how she made a post about the white splaining, which was like kind of definitely to provoke Cameron. Like it was her to come after her. And we all know that you did. Tiffany, you came for Cameron with that white splaining post. And um, I have to agree with Cameron. I have to say that I think that's also bullshit that she made that tweet about the white splaining. And hear me out. It's because I feel like if it was the other way around, I don't think that it would have gone over so well with viewers, with Bravo with the other ladies. Like, I don't think that if Cameron was putting it that way about uh, Tiffany and she like brought in her race into it and like, you know, Asian splaining or Chinese, like whatever you, way you wanna word it. I feel like if she would have did that, it would have been awful. So I'm just thinking if it went the other way around, would it be okay? And I'm feeling like it probably wouldn't be. I just, I don't know. I have a feeling it wouldn't be. Um, and even like in the episode with the chicken feet, which like all the ladies were kind of, other than De Deandra seemed pretty into it. Um, but it seems like Deandra, she doesn't mind trying things. Maybe she's just so traveled to so many places um, and well traveled that she doesn't mind trying new foods. There's some people like that. They're just very adventurous. I mean, look at Anthony Bourdain. Um, I can't think of the other guy that's on the Travel Channel that does. Oh, he goes to places and he eats weird. Um, well, to maybe us, it would be weird. But in other places, it's like a delicacy. But it would be like weird food to us Americans. You know, we're... Let's just be honest, sometimes us Americans, we're not as open to trying other foods, other countries' food. Um, but anyways, so even Stephanie, though, said in the Dallas Housewives that, you know, she would rather basically lick a butthole than eat chicken feet. And I felt like it was kind of like laughed over when Tiffany did it. Or not Tiffany, sorry, Stephanie. I should not mix those up because you know what? Growing up, people would mistake my name and call me Stephanie and I would be like, it's Tiffany. Oh my gosh, I didn't even say. I think I have a title for this now. Housewives Discush Sesh. Because we're going to have a discush sesh about housewives. <laughs> I guess it's pretty much in the title. But yeah, I think that's what I'm going to run with for right now, unless for some reason I have to change it. Um, but for right now, yeah, I'm thinking that's what it will be. Um, anyways, back to what I was talking about with um, Stephanie had said the comment about that she would basically like rather lick butthole than eat chicken feet. And I just feel like Stephanie did not get as much flack for it from Tiffany as what Cameron did. Like I kind of felt like she went for Cameron like Cameron was the only one knocking it or the only one that you know didn't want to partake in it and honestly again and I covered this in the last um the last time the last reunion part that I did my makeup for I went over there uh, anyways, that Cameron, we all know she's just like such a uh, picky eater. Like, it's just well known. I mean, if Tiffany even like looked at other seasons, even the, just a couple, 
with Cameron and um, I'm sure that you would see that, you know, she's not exactly the most adventurous either. And there, again, just like there's people that are, there are people that are not. And I feel like you just should not push somebody to try something that they are just not into trying. And you shouldn't make it such a big deal if they don't want to try it, you know? I mean, I'm just saying, that's just my feelings of it. I just feel like she kind of just went for Cameron with this whole food situation. So anyways, um, but I, I do feel like she didn't really, nobody said anything to Stephanie for her comments, um, about it. And she kind of just flew under the radar. Whereas Cameron, it was like, she was just right under the hot microscope um, about it, so, anyhow, uh, and I just feel like it's really hard these days, like, I feel like, um, the word racist is thrown around so much, you know, I've seen people disagree with others, and race won't even be mentioned, like, nothing about race or anything to do with it will, but, you know, they'll call somebody that, and it's just, it's awful. We're living in such a time of separation, guys. It's just sad. I don't, I just want everybody to love each other. Is that too much to ask? But, um, I, anyway, so I feel like we need to be a little bit more careful, um, making like a comment about maybe somebody being racist or have it, especially like with this whole food situation. I mean, not wanting to try another culture's food, I don't feel makes you racist. I think maybe it makes you not a very adventurous eater. Um, but I feel like it's basically insinuating or referring or whatever you want to say that if somebody's like racist because of food, I, I don't know. I don't feel like that would ever make Cameron a racist. Um, I mean, not maybe like what she said wasn't the best or how she went about it wasn't the best, like etiquette wise, but I don't really feel like she made any sort of comments or made any gestures or, or any of it that would make me think that she was racist. Um, so that's my feelings on that. And then, uh, <laughs> Cameron said something. She made a comment that Twitter doesn't, it does not lie. That made me, I mean, everybody, I think, laughed when she said that. I'm pretty sure I saw every wife on the stage laugh. But, um, yeah, that was just a funny comment I had to share is that she said that Twitter doesn't lie. If only, Cameron, if only. So then, um... Andy goes to want to discuss the pizza party that um, Tiffany threw. And, you know, like, she had, like, all those crazy rules, like, what time to leave by, and I don't know, like, all these etiquette rules. And I just feel like that was probably not a good choice for her as a newbie to come in doing. I just think it put a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Like I, when, when I saw that episode and I first saw like that she had texted them and saying like that she had to work the next day or whatever, like everybody leave by 1030, I think it was like 1030. I feel like that already put a bad taste in people's mouths. Then to go and like, then go on with all these rules after they had shown up and it's like, I don't think it was the best time to do that, Tiffany. You're just asking my opinion. I don't think that was the best time. Um, so the viewer comment there, because Andy read out a few comments, but the one that I found to be like super funny was the one that said that uh, Tiffany's party had more rules than the U.S. had of COVID-19 restrictions. And I thought that one was so funny. Whoever that was, you gave me a good laugh. I'm going to have to say that. Um, but she did. She had so, she had so many roles for these ladies. And it was like her first time even hosting a party. And it's like, girl, you're wanting all these people to like be accepting of you and 
be friends and be accepted into their little group. Um, but then you're also putting out all these rules to them and it's kind of not the way to get a party started, especially with the Dallas ladies. Um, and then I, and I do feel like the whole, the pizza thing, I, I, I don't, I, I don't think it was cool that she put crickets in there. Like, I'm just the type that you do not mess with my food. Like, don't try to be sneaky and get, just to get me to try something like I either want to or I don't. I don't need you to force me. I don't need you to put something in there, have me eat it, tell me, oh, it's so good, blah, 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 you know. Mm, I don't know. Not okay with that, Tiffany. Not cool. Um, I don't, I mean, even if, like I, like I said, even if the intentions are to try to get them to try new things, enhance their palate, whatever, you know, be, uh, partake, in, not be, but partake into the culture, the Chinese culture and having those kind of delicacies with the, whether it be the chicken feet or crickets, I just feel like you should let people kind of choose that on their own to try. I think it's great that you put it out there for them. Um, and maybe it could have also just been a great time to have those questions asked, um, whether that rather than putting pressure on people and then, you know, who wants to be open-minded at that point after you are sitting there literally being pressured into trying something you don't want to. Um, next, oh, yeah, so Brandy got sick after eating some of that, and now, like, looking back, okay, so I've had three babies, and I have had morning sickness all day, I don't even want to call it morning sickness, that would be a lie, because I was sick all day long, especially with my one in the middle, which is my daughter, I was super sick couldn't even hold on water sometimes sick with her so seeing her get sick after hearing what she had ate like yeah that was definitely pregnancy hormones um but how how funny is it for us viewers to notice that and i'm not sure if i'm the only one that put that it was two together but i'm sure i'm not i am sure i'm not Okay, and then Tiffany goes to like defend herself with the uh, crickets. It's saying like the, they're FDA approved and they're not poisonous. And girl, I'm sorry. I don't care if they're all natural, if they will like give me the fountain of youth. I don't care what you got to say. I don't care what approvals are. Like, I don't want to eat it. I don't want to eat it, you know? And don't make me eat it just by make putting some in your pizza and, you know, having me try it that way. Like, no, I'm good. I see why they were mad. I would be mad too. And I can tell Texans take their food seriously. I mean, I am here in Indiana and I take my food pretty seriously. So, I get it. But I just don't think it was cool. Don't trick people like that. Don't trick them into trying things, you know. Um, because, again, I don't think... If it was the other way around, and if the OG ladies were doing this to the new girl, you know that we would all be so upset with the OGs. Like Brandy or Stephanie, which we all know Stephanie probably wouldn't do something like that. Because... I just don't feel like Stephanie's that kind of a person. But um, if it was, anyways, I just don't feel like it would have been okay if even like the OG ladies did that to Tiffany with her being a newbie. Just like, I don't think it's okay for the newbie to come in doing it to the OGs. I'm trying to get this even today. My last one, like this high, would I don't know, I just hate when that happens. Like when one eye looks way better than the other. Not cool. So Cameron um, then goes to say that like she looked up 
tampering with somebody's food and it is a criminal offense. <laughs> oh, Cameron, I love you, but that was funny. I'm sorry, but that, you know, it's a, basically it's a criminal offense in Texas to tamper with somebody's food without their knowledge of it. Even if that's adding an ingredient to their food without them knowing it's, um, considered a criminal, some sort of criminal offense. I don't remember if it was a felony or, or what it could be. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a felony. Um, but yeah, so Cameron looked that up and I'm just like, this girl's like not kidding. She's not playing around with this, with this whole food situation. Mm -mm. I don't blame her though, because I'm kind of a, well, I'm not as picky of an eater as I was when I was like little or even a teenager, but I still have my moments of like what I, and I gotta say chicken feet. And I know like all, there's a ton of countries that eat chicken feet regularly and I get it. Like I'm, I know that here in the state, there's, you know, people that enjoy chicken feet, you know, but it's not for me. I'm just going to say it. I'm good. And crickets, not for me. I had a teacher in eighth grade, science teacher that ate uh, chocolate covered grasshoppers and crickets, I believe that he did both. And he had, like brought them for us to try. Uh, no, I was good. Back then I'm good. Now I'm good. I just don't want to. But for people like Deandra that are good with it, you go. You get that food. You be adventurous and you tell me all about it. Because I'm not going to have it. Okay. Oh, shoot. I forgot that Tiffany calls a Cameron lawyer Barbie. You know that Cameron was eating that up because... With her little pink briefcase. And again, Cameron is smart. She isn't stupid. I can tell. I could tell that from her first season. Like, you know, even with her little sparkle dog food idea, which honestly, I think is smart because there's probably a lot of people out there that want to have pink dog food for their dogs. I know her husband thought she was like really nutty for it, but I bet... There's a little, there's probably a whole demographic for her with that. So, my dog's a Rottweiler. I don't think that he would, he doesn't really care what color his food is as long as he's getting fed. I mean, he's like 140 pounds. So, as long as you're feeding him, he's good. But anyways, um, I just thought that was funny though that Tiffany would call. Her lawyer, um, Cameron lawyer Barbie, because I know that Cameron is probably eating that up. So, um, I think that Brandy did really good with taking like the cricket prank in stride, even though she got sick. I think that the way that she handled it was really well, though. Um, And I, I do feel like that if Brandy had been the one to do that, though, I I mean, this girl's already gotten enough. Uh, hey, um, just enough stuff thrown her way. I don't think that that would have helped. I mean, I know that it was Andy or one of, like, the somebody said, like, maybe it was a viewer question, but basically, like, would it have slid if it was Brandy? And I don't think it would have. If you ask me, I think that it would have just been worse for the girl. Even though we all know that she loves a good prank at this point, I still think that if she would have done that, especially after the video that she put out there, um, and I guess how some of the Asian community has felt about her after that, even though Tiffany did not feel offended by it or whatever. Like she felt like, you know, Brandy was just being funny. Um, but there, there could be others though. So, like, I mean, everybody, I don't care if you're all part of the same race and culture or not. Um, everybody has their own perception. And even if one person from that 
specific race or culture isn't upset, that doesn't mean that the, the person that's seen in right next to them that's also part of it isn't going to be upset. So, um, anyhow, I think that if Brandy would have done the cricket thing, I don't think that it would have been looked over lightly because of just everything that's already taken place. Um, but I mean, that's just, that's just my feeling on it. What do I know? I'm not an executive at Bravo or any, I'm just a regular old person talking about a TV show I like, you know? Um, but I feel like, uh, Stephanie did give Tiffany a read and I, Stephanie, and she always about it so elegantly too. Like the way that she just carries herself. I love, but she said like to, um, Tiffany that the times that she did other than, um, that party, the Hawaiian theme party for her, where she like really let loose. Um, otherwise it felt like they, that Tiffany was looking for a reaction from the wives, but then it was like once she would get a reaction from them, then she would be like, they don't like me. They don't want anything to do with me. Like they don't want to be friends with me. Um, they're not, they won't accept me. And, uh, but Stephanie's like, you know, we're on a show. Like, even though you might have been upset with our reactions to things, like it's part of our job to react which is true. Uh, so like part of me is still confused with Tiffany because I do feel like she's a confident person within her, like like within her own like knowledge and, and everything. But then I also feel like part of her still has that insecurity, like maybe stemming from when she was younger and didn't have a social group of friends like what um, it is on the show. But uh, I just like that Stephanie said something about that because I kind of felt that way just watching it as a viewer. I felt like um, she kind of brought on their, their opinions with what she did. But then she was also like upset thinking that nobody liked her or wanted her to like, I don't know. It was, it was interesting um, to see. So, let me know, what are your thoughts on that too? Did you interpret it that way? I'm interested to know. Yes, I know, I use three kinds of mascara all the time. It's like a minimum, three. Sometimes you gotta have four. Like, I just feel like all of them do something differently. <laughs> so I use them all. I can't help it. I, uh, I think out of all makeup, mascara has got to be my favorite product. That's not the point though. The point is, is that we're talking about Housewives of Dallas. Stay on track. So then um, Andy asks Cam if she thought that like Tiffany's first season was as tough as Cameron's, which if we go back to Cameron's, she definitely got hazed by the other girls. Like, I remember watching it and I did uh, feel bad for Cameron and um, that in her first season. So I was like, dang, they are really messing with her. Uh, but I, I've really grown to love Cameron and I feel like, you know, all the ladies have too. Like, I feel like she definitely has earned her spot as a Dallas housewife. Like I'd hate to see her go because I like what Cameron adds to the show. But uh, so Cameron is like, I don't know, you know, I'll say it's pretty bad. Like it, they were pretty tough on me. Um, And I think because with Brandy's whole situation before the season aired, um, and then with Tiffany getting added on, um, after all that, I, I just think that with Brandy being more neurotic, I want to say this season, or a little bit more self-conscious, um, it wasn't as, it wasn't like it typically would be, I feel like with her pranking and all that stuff. So I feel like Tiffany did get it easier than what, like, um, Cameron did just because of that factor that, you know, Brandy wasn't at her full Brandy prankster and silly and, 
you know, kind of situation that she was when she uh, first met Cameron. So I think that Tiffany definitely had it a little easier. But you know, why are the OG housewives always so hard on the newbies? I want to know. What do you think? I don't know if I'd be that way if I was a housewife. Um, I guess it would depend, like, you know, if I already knew that person socially and, like, already had an opinion of them. Um, and then, like, they came on and I was already there and they were, like, awful to me and just to everybody. But I don't know. It's just always been a big question mark to me as to why it seems like the housewife ladies are always so difficult, hard on those new ones. You know, you were a new one at 1.2. I'm just saying, be welcoming. I think that the Dallas ones are the most, the Dallas wives are the most welcoming to newbies though, out of all of the, if I can, if I'm really thinking clearly enough of all of the different housewife seasons, I feel like that the Dallas ones have been the most accepting of when they've gotten new people on there. So let me know what you think. Do you think the same? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Cameron is cracking me up, was cracking me up this whole time though, because she is like, she has everything in this pink briefcase. Like she just has it all, all the receipts. She has everything, all the prints, everything. Like she came so prepared. Um, she's like Monique with the big binder from Potomac, but you know, different because she has a little pink gray face. Um, so I still, my verdict's still out on Tiffany. Like I, I did like her as an addition on the show in some aspects and in others, like I still don't know what to really think because like I said, she came off so confident, but yet insecure. She kind of came gunning for Cameron, and I felt like that was not necessary. Um, I don't know, though, because it's still her first season, so I think that I'd need a second season to really have a full opinion of it. Then I'll really decide, like, do I want to see this girl on my TV again every week or not? She is beautiful, though. Like, Tiffany, she's a beautiful girl. She is beautiful. She seems to dress well. Um, she carries herself well. Uh, I think that her insecurities maybe are more stemming from growing up um, and the struggles that she went through with that. Mm -hmm. So then they go on to do like t the social media thing between like Cameron and Tiffany, I feel like is such a double edged sword, you know, like, uh, cause Tiffany did like come hard for Cam, for Cam. So like to me, like she kind of brought on the issue herself with it, uh, you know, that's my opinion. Uh, you guys hate having like sits underneath your chin. Not cool. Not fun. But I just feel like, you know, in a sense, Tiffany kind of brought on like the issues with her and Cameron just with the whole social media situation. Like, I don't know. I don't think that she should have went as hard for her as what she did. But we'll see what happens next season because you never know. Those two could end up being best of friends starting out next season. <laughs> How's it looking guys? I guess you really can't even see like my eye makeup, but it's like a nice light pink. <laughs> okay. Um, but I do think that Cameron and Tiffany are like so similar that you would think that they would be friends. So maybe, maybe next season, like I said, maybe we'll see them become friends and maybe not. You never know. Maybe they're so alike that they can't be friends. You know, they're just too similar. That could be. 
They do kind of sound similar too. Uh, I've distinguished their the difference of their voices, but in the beginning when Tiffany first came on and stuff, like I would really have to look at my screen to see who is talking at times. Cause so I was like, is that Tiffany or is that Cameron right now? I can't tell. So then they, um, we go on to talk about like their word, their blunders this season, um, which the, these clips just in general just made me laugh because of uh, just the words that they <laughs> used. Um, apparently Bigfoot, <laughs> Bigfoot is one of the seven wonders of the world. Um, looks a little more even this time, guys. It looks a little more even. Okay. I'm still trying to get a hang of this whole contouring thing. And I don't know. We don't know yet. I don't know what to think. Okay. Oh, um, nine, com apparently there's nine commands. Men's. Oh gosh, it made me laugh so hard just to hear some of the things. I kind of forgot what some of the things were that they um, said, but that made me laugh. Um, oh, the typhoon shot. She got the typhoon shot. <laughs> um, that one was funny to me. And the when uh, Cameron was talking to her husband and when they were going to do dim sum, she kept saying like dim sum, dim sum. Like, I don't know, it sounded so funny though. When Cameron was saying it, it made me laugh. Uh, which Tiffany like kind of helped her figure out how to say it properly. So maybe she won't have that blunder anymore. Um, oh, and the astro glide. <laughs> I felt like you were astro gliding. That one was funny to me too. Um, which, I like Stephanie saying astro gliding, like, <laughs> I use that for sexy time. Oh, it made me laugh hearing that. I don't know why I was wiping down just there. Like, I just did not, I was into what I was saying. I was not paying attention to what I was doing. Anyways, um, oh. The Captain Brandy, what did you guys think of that? Was it creepy to you or did you find it funny? I found it funny. So let me know what you thought. I, I thought that it, the Captain Brandy was, I mean, sure, she was a little creepy. It was a little creepy. But I also found it to be super funny. Um, but yeah, I just found their word blunders to be pretty funny this season. Oh, and next was the Andrea segment. So, like, you know how they she had that shaman or whatever, which uh, on the show somebody said that it was like a, he was a hairdresser, hairstylist, um, which was confirmed that yeah, he he does do hair too. Apparently, he does very good hair. So, get it, dude. Um. The family issues with her, like, it's so crazy, these issues that she has, like, with her. It's so, like, soap opera-ish to me, like, things that you expect to hear, you know, a family from an oil. You know, they've made TV shows about that, you know, with oil and, um, just, like, the, the dynamic there, you know, and her changing her name at such an older age. I don't know what to make of that. Um, and it was really cringy though when she snapped at Mama D when she was drunk. I felt so bad for Mama D. Like, sure, their relationship is so up and down and all over the place, but at the end of the day, like, all they have is each other. And part of me can feel like I can relate to that because, um, like with my mom and I, it was just me and her for the first, like, couple of years of my life. Um, and then the dad that adopted me you know, uh, they didn't get married till I was like seven and he has a daughter from a previous relationship who's six years older than me. And so she was like living with her mom most of the time. So like for me, I've always been really close with my mom. 
And so I can sometimes uh, relate to the D'Andrew and Mama D relationship. Sometimes. <laughs> but I feel like she should not have been like that to Mama D. Oh, so I know that you guys saw my... Well, I don't know, but I'm gonna hope that you have seen my latest unboxing um, where I had my hip dot brushes from um, Faced by Hot by Kareem. And so I'm going to use one of his brushes. Or, or, ooh, I just said his. And he, stop it, Tiffany. <laughs> I need to. When I refer to Faced by Kareem, it's them or they. They just put out a uh, Instagram post saying that the pronoun they want to go by is they or them. And um, so I want to respect that because I do respect that. But um, now I got to I gotta make sure to, that I keep correcting myself because I want to say him, um, but them. So go check them out. And... Um, they have a hip dot line or a brush set line, brush set line. I mean, I don't know. Whatever word that you want me to use for the brush set, that's what we'll use. Brush set, not brush line. But go check them out. It's at Face by Kareem. You will love the looks that you see on that Instagram page. And if you decide to go to get the brushes, you'll like those too. Back to Housewives. So, um, the shaman is a hair and makeup stylist and he did do Stephanie's hair for three years. What? I couldn't believe that. Um, so anyways, they, we talk about when the, they were doing the, the thing with the shaman at Deandra's, um, and how Brandy just felt uncomfortable, which. She says like being a Christian or whatever, she felt uncomfortable because of like the chants that they were doing. She was like, well, I don't really know what chants I'm saying. Um, and I, I get that. I gotta re I gotta say, I gotta respect that because um, if you don't know the meaning to something that you're just like saying out loud and depending on how you feel about that, you could feel uncomfortable. So I guess I respect that. I respect most people's feelings on things. I'm a pretty understanding person. I just uh, don't try to sweat the small stuff, you know? Um, but anyway, just a little bit, a little tidbit about me. Cream contour on matte foundation Ooh. or wait oh my gosh I haven't even done my foundation what am I talking about I haven't even done it yet. I'm all over the place guys <laughs> anyways um I guess I'm doing like the reverse uh makeup reverse foundation or whatever where you like don't put your foundation on until after you do other stuff. I don't know. I watched a video of it. I don't remember the whole full technique, but that's what I'm feeling like right now. Um, so do you, who do you think is telling the truth with the whole Deandra name change situation? Do you think it's Mama D or do you think it's Deandra? Cause she said that her story that she remembers it as, um, you know, cause he, Glenn, I want to say his name is, gosh, I don't want to get his name wrong. Yes, Glenn Simmons, her stepdad, her, or maybe he adopted her. Was I even actually watching the show at this point? My goodness, I'm starting to question myself. But uh, anyway, so he like basically did everything that like a dad would do. Um, and so that's why she took the name. But then I wonder if that's the truth or if it's what Mama D said, which was that the uh, Simmons name could get, um, Deandra a lot further in Dallas than the, um, Callaway last name, which I'm pretty sure that both of those are, I mean, they both sound prestigious enough that I guess I don't know what 
difference one would make than the other, but I don't live in Dallas. So I guess I don't know um, what kind of perks come with having the Simmons name. But anyhow, what do you think? Do you think that it, Mama D was right and that maybe Deandra just doesn't want an, us to know that about her? Because even Cameron, I believe, was like, yeah, that was the rumor that was out, you know, back when it first started because of how, how old she was, like when she changed her name and all that. So let me know what you think. Sound off in the comments. Her dad's situation though, it seems interesting. Um, but again, I've had my own fair share of interesting dad situations. So I'm right there with you, Deandra. I'm right there with you. Um, so I just hope, wish the best for her with her family situation, whatever it may be with her, uh, stepmom or ex-stepmom and the brother that she's trying to reconnect with and all that. Like, I just, I just wish her the best. Um, and I was happy to see that she genuinely, truly seems upset with how she treated her mom this season. Or not this season, but in that episode where she was, like, belligerently drunk and all that. I felt like it was genuine from her heart of the remorse. Um, ooh, highlighter first. Highlighter first. So, I'm happy. And I hope that, like, she really does not go backwards and do that again to Mama D. Because I felt, I felt really bad for Mama D. I did. I was like, ooh, Deandra, no, that is not a good look for you, honey. Don't do that to your mom. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think that Brandy's baby is super adorable when she just popped up. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I just love me some babies. I do. Obviously, I have three. I've had three of them myself. <laughs> okay. I love highlighter. I'm pretty sure I've already said that before. Who doesn't? Who doesn't love highlighter? Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that the surprise pregnancy was really cool. And I get why she was, like, freaked out um, at the doctor's office when she found out that she was pregnant. Because, you know, if you're not taking care of your body as a mom, you're going to feel so bad when if you find out that you've been pregnant and you've been, you know, drinking and doing stuff that you wouldn't want to while you're, like, due to your body while pregnant. So, I get why she was um, upset. So, I get where, like, those fears and anxiety what is that in her, um, hearing that you're pregnant and that was like the last thing that you were expecting to hear. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, that was so sad to hear about how her mother-in-law passed away. I felt really bad for Brandy and for her, da her daughter Brinkley, which I mean, I think it's wonderful and a miracle that Brinkley is okay, but, um, that's awful to experience that. Okay, I gotta spray myself with my finishing spray. Whew. I love that. Okay, so anyways, um, I just think that's really sad that uh, her, mo her mother-in-law passed away in a car accident like that and with her daughter Brin Brinkley in the car. Like, I'm glad that Brinkley's okay and and, um, that, you know, she survived it, but that's, and with barely any injuries too. Like, I mean, that is incredible in itself. Don't get me wrong, but it's just sad that, you know, for her to lose her grandmother in that kind of way. Um, I just love Brandy and Stephanie's relationship, even just during Stephanie during Brandy's whole segment. Like that's friendship goals right there. Best friend goals. I think it's so neat. Um, I just, I love those two together. It's going to be weird next uh, season without Brandy because, you know, she quit the show. Um, oh, excuse me. 
So I wonder if brain, if Stephanie will stay on and I wonder what that'll be like without them because you know, like, oh, their relationship has been like, I feel like the whole, a lot of people watch Dallas for that reason, I'm sure. Um, but let's go on to the next part that Andy asks about, which is the infamous viral video in the in the housewives world. It's viral because I know I saw it and I watched this video multiple times to make sure that I was seeing what I was seeing. So I was hoping like it wasn't the case, but it was. Um, but, um, Brian had been caught kissing another woman in a club. Now, apparently this was from 2018, um, is what Brandy had said, is that it was from 2018, uh, and I don't know what to, I mean, there were seasons where he was acting quite weird towards Brandy. And, um, I know they've been together since, I think she said either middle school or high school. I mean, that's a, that's a really long time to be with somebody. And marriage is not easy. And I'm not saying that it's okay for Brian to go kiss another woman or for Brandy to, if she were to have been with like another man, I don't, I don't agree with that. But I also feel like that's their marriage and their business, like. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, he's the worst guy ever. Cause I don't know, I don't know them from Adam, but I don't think it was right for him to cheat on his wife. I do feel that if you are in a relationship and um, you do want to not be in that relationship anymore, you don't just go and make out with somebody or get physical with somebody or engage in conversation with somebody else like enter entertaining anybody else period is wrong just no don't even do it it's not right it's not cool just tell that person that you don't want to be with them anymore or something i don't know but um so of course andy had to ask about this viral video if brandy's year was not already hard enough that came out um and you know, like, there's even rumors going that Bruin is really Brian's child with another woman. Can we just, like, touch on that for a second? I happened to see that on the, like, both on the internet a while ago. Um, and I, I don't know, I don't, I don't think that that's the case. Um, I, uh, and if it is, I mean, that's, again, not anybody's business. That would be pretty crazy. I mean, would I be shocked? I mean, I wouldn't be shocked. These days, I, I've heard, I feel like I've heard just about everything. So, I mean, it wouldn't be like I'd be like jaw drop shocked. But it would be crazy if what's been circulating around the internet was like true. Um, I don't think so, though. I don't. Uh. But yeah, I just have to say that. Uh, so anyways, yeah, Andy just of course had to ask her about that. I mean, it is the housewives reunion. I'm sure that she knew that was coming. Mm. But not cool, Brian, not cool. 2018 or not, I don't care how long ago it was, how new, I just, no, it ain't cool. Um, so what are your guys' thoughts on Brian and Brandy's marriage? I think that whatever works for them or for anybody is what it, you know, it's not my business one way or another. Um, but I don't think that you should cheat on somebody. And their, their marriage, we have seen go through highs and lows. So, I mean, of course, I, I think that we all knew at one point it was, it was rocky. So I, I guess I'm not so shocked to hear that the, the year was 2018. I, Probably be more mad if um, it was like even more recent than that. I'm not saying that I'm overlooking it because they were possibly going through their own marital issues at the time. I'm just saying that, you know, um, the 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 year makes sense to me. But anyhow, so 
Just tell me what you guys think of Brian and Brandy's relationship, their marriage. Um, I'd like to hear your thoughts. And then Brandy said that somebody like sent her 11 year old the video of Brian with the other woman. Wrong. Whoever that was, you're wrong. It's a little girl. That's her dad. I don't care what you say. Like that's her dad. I don't care if it's not cool that he did that to her mom and his wife. Like you need to, there, there needs to be a line drawn. Like let kids be kids. Let, let adult problems be adult problems. You don't need to be bringing kids in on some adult problems. You know, it's already enough that their parents are on the TV show. Let alone needing to like send them videos of like their parents doing wrong. Come on now. It's a child. Leave the child alone. Leave the children alone. Take the hate to the person that, you know, you feel it towards. The one that's on the reality show that's the adult. You don't gotta send it to a little girl. Just saying. Anyways, but I love Stephanie. I think that she is such a great, I, I think that with everything that um, is going on with Brandy, I think it's so great that she has a friend like Stephanie that um, really supports and loves and cares about her. It's just a really, it's great to see. I love seeing women supporting other women and I don't know. I'm a sucker for that too. I'm just a sucker for everybody loving each other, okay? And accepting each other. Oh, oh, and then they talk about um, who they think like leaked that video or whatever and everybody, and you know, it's like, oh, it's well known who it was. And uh, of course, it's Leanne that gets accused of being one to have leaked it. Or maybe somebody within her little, do I want to say camp? Her, I don't know, her circle? Her circle. I'm not going to say camp, her circle. Which I wouldn't be surprised because Leanne and Brandy have had it, it in and out and all around for each other since the very beginning of um, Dallas Housewives. Although, um, I, I get why Leanne got fired over Brandy with the comments because the difference was, is that like Leanne was saying like very derogatory racist comments, whereas Brandy was making fun of herself saying that she looks similar to another race, which I just feel like one is more of like, I'm making fun of myself. Not that it was okay the way that she was, you know, I, I get it. It wasn't cool for her to bring another race saying that she maybe like made it look like she was mocking another race saying, oh, I look like this and you know, but regardless, I still feel like she was just trying to be funny and lighthearted with it. Uh, whereas Leanne was just awful. The comments that she made to Carrie and that was the stuff that like the producers put in the show. I mean, I can't even imagine. I mean, the things that she said, I don't want to know what she says off camera. And, um, I get that Leanne had a troubled childhood. I'm just saying this right now for anybody who is a big fan of Leanne. Like I was not a fan of her and I get that she had her own trauma, but I don't feel like she acted very well with towards the other ladies. Like I don't think that her behaviors were ever justified with how I think that she's very da da damaged and hurt and hurt people hurt people. She just needs to find some healing sort of situation. But yeah, I like I oh I just said like I agree with Tiffany because you know it was asked about that video of uh Brandy versus how like like with Leanne's situation and uh Tiffany I um agreed with her like because she didn't take offense to it. She just felt like Brandy was like making fun of herself. Um so I I I have to agree with that. Like I took it as Brandy was just making fun of herself. She wasn't trying to be like racist and derogatory towards a certain group of people or of, of a certain group of race. Mm, I do think that Brandy was really self-conscious around Tiffany, especially in the beginning. Like their interactions were like kind of awkward with one another. And I just felt like Brandy was really guarded. She didn't want to be like her full authentic self. Um, and obviously in part with 
the video that was, she put out on Instagram Live that everybody found out about. Um, so with that, and then the, uh, everything else she was going through, like I just felt like she was, Brandy was just not herself this season. Um, just a lot more reserved. But, uh, I, I feel like Randy was still like welcoming towards Tiffany and I don't know, I, I don't want to say that Tiffany was not welcoming towards Brandy. I just felt like it was just an awkward situation between maybe both of them. Um, and Brandy just, she just, like I said, was not herself. And, but I like that she was accountable though. She was like, you know, it's not, it's not anything that you're doing, Tiffany. Like it's all me. It's all like my own situation and issues and, um, you know, like her own self-conscious kind of torment that she had on herself inside. So I'm glad that like Brandy was able to tell Tiffany that it wasn't, it wasn't Tiffany. It was, it was Brandy. Um, their final thoughts. So, cause like the, there's only going to be two parts, no third part. Um, so the final thoughts were just basically like with Carrie, she was just being accountable with how she was, um, acting towards the others and the comments that she had made was, you know, basically just because of the things that she was going through. So I love that she was accountable and just, you know, didn't, no excuses. I hate excuses. I love accountability and like, if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, you're right. Like, I just, I appreciate people that can do that. Mm, Brandy with the JR's bedroom um, situation, which it's a very historical thing in Dallas. I get it. I can understand why she was upset. And did not take a pregnancy test sooner, you know. So she got to take better care of her body because as mothers, that's what we want to do for our babies. Um, but thankfully, her baby's healthy. That's all that matters. You have a healthy, happy baby. And then Deandra, of course, she wishes that she would have done more. Like, starting conversations and sparking other conversations with the other wives about, like, the cult, the Chinese culture and having Tiffany uh, share more of herself and her life and, like, sparking those kind of conversations to happen. Uh, Tiffany didn't want to do the, the cricket or chicken feet. She regrets that situation. And, um, and she wished that she had let her walls down sooner. And uh, maybe, you know, like I said, next next season she'll come on, hopefully, and then we can see those walls come down a little bit. Uh, and can I say that her getting a bloody nose on camera, I've never had a bloody nose before ever, but I can imagine that I would not look that good with a bloody nose. Like, she was like, oh, that's not cute. Girl, you still look cute. What are you talking about? Um, and then Cameron wishes that she didn't offend Tiffany and that she had just maybe gotten to know Tiffany better. So that was it that was that was the season um reunion of the dallas housewives i enjoyed this past season i liked the i like that leanne wasn't on the season sorry if you're a Le leanne fan again i'm sorry just not a fan of her so i thought that this season was a lot more positive um obviously carrie was going through some stuff so I, I just hope that the majority of all these wives come back. I mean, aside because we from Brandy, because we know that she's not. So I hope that they all just come back. And I want to see like where they are even like a year from now or however their filming goes. You know what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the season of the Dallas Housewives. I'm looking forward to the next one. Um, that is it for my, my video covering them. And my look is all done. What do you think? Um, I'm going to do the Housewives, the Real Housewives of New York. They, uh, had the second episode, so I'm going to do that one. And I have a whole unboxing video of just ColourPop that I'm going to do in the next couple days. Be on the lookout. All right, lovelies, I'm going to get going. I've been talking to you long enough here. So just have a, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.